A prime rib roast is one of those dishes that when you put on your dinner table, you become an instant culinary rock star to all of your friends and party. I'm talking Hall of Fame level stuff. But this massive USDA prime rib roast can sometimes be a little intimidating to cook. But the truth is, it cannot be any easier to make and I'm here to guide you down the path of culinary greatness. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is paint on some veggie oil. This is gonna help the meat get brown in the oven and get nice and roasty and toasty. Next, I'm gonna reach for steak's best friend, kosher salt. And I'm gonna go pretty aggressive here because this is a huge piece of meat. And that'll help form a nice crust. So go a nice layer of salt all around the meat and up by the bones here because the bones have tons of flavor. And I'm not ashamed to say you'll see me gnawing on them after dinner. Next, let's grab some freshly cracked pepper. Not as much as the kosher salt, but a good amount for sure. And now some freshly chopped rosemary and thyme. And these are just those ubiquitous wintertime herbs that make the house smell so good. And it's like one big giant hug. And that looks really good. Next, we gotta flip this guy over. I think I might need a little spot right now like at the gym. One, two, three. Ah. Oh man, that felt good. So this is the fat cap side. We're gonna season it almost exactly the same way. Already, look at that. I mean, that herb crust is gonna be so much flavor, trust me. And now to introduce even more flavor, I'm gonna stuff some garlic cloves in the actual fat itself. So I'm gonna take my knife here and just do some half inch deep cuts like that. And I'm gonna take these garlic cloves I have here and just stuff them in. It's like hidden jewels of deliciousness in your prime rib. And the nice thing about this is you just get that essence of garlic. You don't bite into a whole chunk of garlic and then nobody's gonna kiss you later on in the night. But if you're standing near the mistletoe and nobody kisses you, that is just gonna be a sad, sad story. Now, if you're a Flav City fan, you know that we never put cold meat into a hot oven. So I'm gonna let all these flavors do their marinating voodoo on the counter for one hour while the meat comes up to temperature. Now, ideally you wanna stash this in the refrigerator just like this overnight. Then this is gonna form an amazing crust and a Christmas miracle is gonna happen because all those flavors are gonna go super deep into the meat. And don't worry about the salt drawing out moisture. There's plenty in the rib roast. But today I'm doing one hour. Now, the only way to know when this prime rib is ready is to use a probe thermometer. Don't be a hero and try to guess because I played that game many a times and lost every single one. I'm gonna take my probe and just insert it into the deepest part of the rib roast. Now I'm gonna roast this in a 325 degree oven until the internal temperature gets 130 degrees. While the meat's in the oven, we can make my horseradish butter. It's a play on a classic horseradish cream sauce and it's so easy to make. Start by grating two tablespoons of fresh horseradish and add it to one stick of unsalted room temperature butter. The zest of one lemon, one garlic clove grated, one tablespoon each of fresh parsley and thyme, a pinch of kosher salt, and a couple cracks of peps. Mix it all up. Now after we cut the steak and we put the butter on top and it melts into the meat, oh, Homer Simpson moment. It's been two and a half hours and the house smells unbelievable. I just looked out the front window and every dog in the neighborhood is lined up. So you know we're doing something right. Now this has to rest for 30 minutes so the juices can redistribute throughout the meat. You could do it up to an hour, but I just don't have the patience for that. All right, the wait is finally over, thank goodness. Let's cut into this beauty. Oh, like a hot knife through butter, baby. And the great reveal. Oh, baby. Perfectly medium rare, the crust is so charred and crusty. Drool vision is happening right now, people. This is unbelievable. Because we let the meat rest, the juices aren't running everywhere. Let's not forget about our horseradish butter. Let's just reach in here, dollop a nice big old knob on here. And that butter is just gonna melt into the meat. A little bit of the heat from the horseradish, the garlic, it is money. Guys, there it is, my prime rib roast. How easy was that? If you want the recipe, it's below in the description box. Check it out, let me know how you like it. And while you're at it, why don't you click that subscribe button because I am just a humble home cook, cranking out new videos every single week for all my fellow home cooks out there. Plus, if you wanna see how to make a Mac Daddy ribeye, check out the video below. Also, I'm gonna hook you up with a filet mignon. Until then, I will see you next week. Keep on cooking. Later.